On this week's episode of Ferris in Focus, we head into the Big Rapids community to explore Artworks, an outlet for local artists. We sent some excitement around campus as professors and students discuss the political scene that the next four years might hold with our new president, Barack Obama. We'll check out the state-of-the-art biotechnology program here at Ferris State University and meet the real Officer Joy Paquette. We hear from Kyle and Megan on the latest in entertainment news and technology. And we sit down with Dr. Heck, a geology professor, and hear about his passion for teaching. All this and more starts now. Artworks is the visible branch of two organizations that merged in 2005. Macosta County Council for the Arts and the West Central Michigan Council for the Humanities. The artworks here where we are today is the visible arm of those two organizations. 2005 the two organizations merged and then they decided just to drop MOCA and call it Artworks because that was the most uh, well known of all the names of both organizations. At the gallery, you will find the art of approximately 120 different artists, and those would be all different kinds of uh, artistic expressions, sculptures, walking sticks, woodworking, uh, metalworking, uh, two-dimensional art such as uh, watercolors, art, batiking. Um, we have furniture makers here. Well, it's being exposed to art and the discovery of what can awaken your senses. Uh, every time something new comes in, it's an exciting adventure for us. We have two dance studios downstairs. We offer about six or eight different kinds of uh, dance. Um, we offer ballroom, foxtrot, cha-cha-cha. What the gallery provides is an opportunity for people who are shopping uh, for gifts or for themselves or for their homes, even hospitals, banks, to get works of art that are one of a kind. They're not printed, 8,000 of them in a, in a frame and sold at Walmart or Meijer. Uh, they are one of a kind paintings that we have prints and we have originals. You can buy cards here that are uh, inexpensive. You can buy paintings that are very expensive and some that are very moderate. We have gifts here for all different pocketbooks uh, and you won't find the things that we have for sale here uh, mass produced anyplace else. We've got pottery, we've got a couple people who make glass beads, uh, some people who make uh, beautiful glass bulbs and um, uh, just all different kinds of one-of-a-kind things, vases, even clothing. I think uh, our volunteers really enjoy working at Artworks. It's not a real busy store, but it is a place where if people come in, they're looking for something special, you have an opportunity to help them uh, explore a variety of different artistic expressions and hopefully choose one. I've been with Artworks since the very, very beginning when we were in a much smaller building. I have quite an emotional tie to Artworks which is why I volunteered to be the gallery director. I help here at Artworks, volunteer. Um, I help open up usually in the mornings. Uh, it makes me feel that I'm contributing. Um, I'm retired now. I got some extra time. I help somebody. It's a benefit for our community because it gives a good outlet for people to understand what the art world is all about. Creativeness is such an um, an awakening, it's a, an aliveness in uh, your soul. Not only uh, learning how to paint or work with your hands, but it really gives your brain a good exercise. I uh, paint watercolors, and that's how come I started with artworks to begin with. If I can make the artist all feel it's fun to be here, I will have accomplished what I want to do. Artworks Gallery is located in the old part of uh, Big Rapids downtown. It's on Michigan Avenue, 106 North. What's really neat is to 
when you when you look at the 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 results of this election is that you know is how many people of of all different ages of different races of different ethnicities of different regions of the country voted for the first African American for president so and as he said that we've just this is just the beginning you know well, it is a big deal uh, to us and the rest of the world, symbolically and emotionally. You know, it's a, a great step forward. I don't know how many African Americans in their 50s have said to me, I never thought, I, thought I'd see this in my lifetime. I think this whole election has been good for the United States when we look back at it historically, because you did have so many pe different people who were, you know, you had white males, you had females, you had African Americans who were very involved in. That's what that's where we're going. So is and that's where we should be going. I think so. Uh, this election has been a lot. I think you will see a change in the tax structure. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt. Uh, President Obama was is going to go back to the the uh, taxing structure of the people making a quarter of a million dollars or more uh, that we had under uh, Bill Clinton. People who are on Social Security and retirement, that the first $50,000 would not be taxed. And this would be, I mean, they've earned this, you know? So those are some major changes there. A major national public works infrastructure repair program that not only will put people to work, it, it increases the possibility of jobs in the future because this is what business needs. It's the foundation for economic growth. This would be an investment in the future and put people to work will produce new jobs, the new economy. That's what uh, I would really love to see him do. That's kind of an FDR kind of initiative. An inexperience will be overcome because no president, no matter how experienced or how intelligent, can uh, afford not to listen to good advisors and at least one devil's advocate. Uh, you should always have somebody telling you everything that can go wrong if you do what you're planning on doing. There are a lot of problems uh, presenting the next president of the United States and uh, you know we need to take that into consideration. It's going to take a, a lot of hard work, a lot of decisions. So a lot of work needs to be done. The, 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 the heavy lifting is ahead. This was pretty light lifting. Once he uh, defeated uh, Senator Clinton and, and now John McCain, uh, it's probably uh, relatively light work compared to occupying the office and having a good four years. The blame just isn't gonna, isn't gonna cut it. We've gotta, we've gotta work toward that. So I think that this, in these areas will be some of the most challenging that any new administration will face. And, and uh, that's the one area where the president-elect um, can at least begin to bring us together. Oh, we're one people, we're all Americans, we have one president. Uh, we should uh, wait and see and, and give the, this next president the benefit of the doubt. Uh, you know, that's just a fair thing, fair thing to do because there's too much at stake. Change is tough. It's hard. What I would say to students watching this is, is get ready because um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wild ride, you know, but it's a good ride. And, you know, and uh, make the best of it because as, as President Lex says, this is your time. This is our time. And it's been an honor to be part of it. Again, everybody, I'm Megan. This segment is to help you stay informed on what's happening in the entertainment industry. This week, I'm going to show you other places beside the segment to find great entertainment information. Let's hop online. A great website to find e news is RottenTomatoes.com. Rotten Tomatoes is a site full of movie reviews from critics and normal viewers alike. Whether or not the movies are worth watching is displayed using the tomato meter, which is based on good and bad reviews. There are also links to movie trailers to pique your interest even more. What in the world? The 
site also details on box office numbers, DVD release dates, gossip news, and a very useful tool that tells you what movies are playing and at what time in your area. If you're looking for details, here's another interesting site. The Internet Movie Database is a wealth of information on every movie from The Great Train Robbery, made in 1903, to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 1, to be released in late 2010. IMDB.com contains pretty much anything you'd ever want to know about any mainstream film. That's it for now. I'll see you here next week. Same time, same place. When you visit Vandray Home Furnishings in Big Rapids, you'll meet our knowledgeable sales staff that will help transform your room or home furnishings to match the lifestyle that reflects you, whether it's your kitchen, your bedroom, or your home theater system. Vandray has it all. 33,000 square feet of furniture, appliances, including the Clearance Center and Northern Michigan's premier floor and store. You'll like the look, you'll love the price. Vandray. My name is uh, Dr. Brad Isler. I'm the coordinator of the biotechnology program, and I'm also an associate professor of biology. Biotechnology is essentially the study of molecules. It could be anything from genetics, um, drug research, animal care, um, pretty much anything you see on TV when it comes to any of those fields would be biotechnology. Um, any of the genetic uh, breakthroughs you hear in medical technology many times also would be related to bi biotechnology. Biotech is split into essentially three separate areas, uh, immunology and microbiology, uh, genetics, DNA, working with DNA, and also proteins. And in either of those areas, they can go into neurobiology, molecular biology, molecular genetics, genetics, uh, microbiology. The possibilities are pretty much endless. The biotechnology is kind of the uh, bringing together a lot of different fields. So you can use biotechnology for like research, you can go into actually pharmacy. A biotech person could do things with like if you wanted pharmaceutical research or cancer research, a lot of research positions for sure. It's very much research based. Generally the students that we see joining biotech are students that are interested in working in lab. Um, one of the first things I ask a student when they when they come to talk to me about joining biotech, I, says, I say, do you like to work in lab? And if they do, biotech would be a great place for you because you do spend a lot of your time the second two years working in lab, um, a lot of independent thought, working with these different equipment in lab, and actually just learning a lot about how biology and how molecular biology works. Uh, a lot of our lectures are very it goes with the lab, you learn something and then you do it or you do it and then you learn about why you did it. Uh, well, for one, Ferris is a, you know, more one-on-one -on -one interactions, smaller labs than like a big school, um, but it's still quality labs. It's a very teaching-oriented school, so therefore Ferris is better than, I, I think, than um, other colleges in that the instructors are solely based on teaching and they're focused on teaching you how to do these things and they're not based on, you know, their own research. Classes are very small. The laboratories usually not more than 12 to 13 students in the upper levels. Lectures are not more than 20 to 25 students. Lots and lots of opportunity to have hands-on, whereas actually students get to work with things in lab. It's not just a matter of the professor saying, okay, we're going to work with this today in lab. I'm going to show you how we do it, but you're not going to actually be able to touch this stuff. Nope, the students actually get to get in the lab and actually play around with some of these biotechnology tools. In biotechnology, you're in the lab constantly, so you get a lot of experience with different techniques and different, uh, just a lot of experience in the lab. And that looks really good when you're going on to other schools or when you're trying to get a job, things like that. In our uh, biotech lab, we have all of the basics you would need for a biotechnology lab. The types of labs we do, we do labs in protein purification, uh, protein isolation, protein quantification. We do work with 
DNA, where essentially we will extract DNA, work with DNA, type individuals for DNA. Um, in microbiology, of course, we work with microbes, um, both primarily the uh, non-pathogenic type of microbes. Uh, immunology, we work with uh, antibodies, um, actually working with antibodies that come out of animals, extracting them from animals and actually working with them in a, in a laboratory setting. Our students also, along with what they get here at Ferris, all the students in the biotechnology program are required to do an internship, usually between your junior and senior year. That's an invaluable part of their, um, of their instruction here at Ferris. I would recommend biotech because it's going to better prepare you for, um, well you have many options with biotech. You can either go straight into the industry and work in a lab and do research under another scientist like someone with a PhD or you can um, go on to graduate school uh, and actually it'll give you a heads up because most people who want to go on to graduate school don't have the lab experience that we get here, the research experience, so it'll give you a leg up in the master's program. So. Well, Ferris, um, you used your program coordinator for when you're going out into looking for internships and you see what they know, you see who's gone where, which you're more likely to be able to get in somewhere if you know somebody. Uh, job placement is very, very good. Uh, we have excellent, um, we have excellent background in placing students into graduate school. We've had students for industry. We've placed students in uh, many places in Michigan, uh, many of the new up-and-coming biotech firms in Michigan. Um, plus, we've also had some success with placing students in biotechnology companies outside the state of Michigan as well. We really do prepare students in a way that it gives them a leg up on their competition. Many times when our students go to graduate school, they email us back after the first year and say, by the way, all the classes I took my first year in graduate school were all reviews. So we're teaching a lot of our classes here at Ferris at almost at a graduate student level. Also, we like to see them and we do send our students out to essentially spread the word of the biotechnology program here at Ferris and meet new people and essentially network. Uh, in the summer, we have a biotechnology camp for high school students. And We've had this for, I believe now, it's been our eighth year running. Um, it's a great opportunity to bring students in from the surrounding area, from Grand Rapids, from even in the Big Rapids area, to learn more about biotechnology. The world is going more towards a biotech world. Um, of course, in Michigan, we know uh, what has happened to heavy industry, such as the auto industry. Uh, the government is putting quite a bit of money into fostering the biotechnology field because you know, of course, that with biotechnology um, and with the aging of our populations, people are getting older. So a lot of work is being done into, of course, anti-aging medicine, uh, both in terms of genetics, in terms of drugs, and pharmacology, and pharmaceuticals. All of that would be related to biotechnology. So our students would be very well prepared for the expansion of biotechnology that will occur in the near and in the distant future as well. Hey Ferris, I'm Kyle Way and this is your Technology Minute. It's getting colder out and what better time than now to plan your spring break road trips. And with new technology, planning road trips is easier than ever. Paper maps are antiques. And online map services like Google and MapQuest take time and printer ink. Here's the newest trend, portable GPS devices. The three main manufacturers, Magellan, TomTom, Tom, and Garmin, all have base models starting at an affordable $150. You'll pay a little bit more for features like text-to-speech, you have reached your destination, point of interest, and international maps, but it's all worth it for some people. So whether you're planning a route to Mexico or just want to find the nearest Starbucks, a portable GPS is a cheap and handy piece of technology. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's Technology Minute. Drive safe, and I'll see you next week. I'm really excited, you know, something new, and uh, it's time for a change. A little scared, <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe he can pull it out of there. I was hoping for the other one because I thought with his history and having been in there that he probably would have been able to do a little bit better job. I'm excited. I feel it's like a good choice for now, but uh, who knows? He'll be tested, that's for sure. So we'll just see how everything works out. I like it a lot. He brings inspiration. It has been needed for a long time, and uh, I'm glad it finally came. I don't really know. I'm sorry.
I just hope that, you know, he won it and everybody voted for him because he was the right person, not because of the whole race issue. I think it's a great thing, chance for some change. I think it's going to be pretty different for a little bit. I thought that he's a good man and the new president is a, this, he's the first black president in this country. Did I vote for him? Honestly, no, because I just, I'm not a fan of his policies, basically. He seems like a pretty intelligent guy, so I figure whatever he does should hopefully benefit the country. Well, personally, uh, I am very impressed with it because I think uh, it's a big milestone for us that we have our first African-American black president. If I would have voted, which I didn't have time to at the time, I would have voted for Obama, so I'm very happy about it. Hopefully with a Democrat, we'll do better. It's a new start after Bush wrecked it for eight years. I voted for John McCain. Uh, I thought he was a better person, but in the end, you know, America's moving forward and I'm pleased. It wasn't about me voting for a black man. I really think that Obama was the best choice. I'm for a Democrat. I think our country is finally headed in the right direction. Attention students of Ferris State University, Crossroads Academy, and the Big Rapids community. Have an idea for a tee or hoodie? Innovative graphics can help bring your design to reality. We feature screen printing, embroidery, vinyl lettering, signage, banners, and rubber stamps. Innovative graphics is your source for Greek apparel. Our sweatshirts under $50 are a great gift idea for friends and family. We're located across the bridge and just past the light at 815 Maple Street. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, and Saturday, 10 to 2. What I love about Mancino's is the excellent service, customer satisfaction, and the rapid delivery. Best grinders ever. My favorite pizza? That's easy. Hands down, Mancino's. Gotta go with, gotta go with the grilled chicken. The best. Be sure to show your Ferris ID and get 10% off. We deliver to the Big Rapids community. Mancino's! State Street, Big Rapids. My name is Joy Paquette. I'm a police officer here at Ferris State University, and this is my bulldog story. I grew up in Waterford, Michigan, which is down about 45 minutes from the Detroit suburb area. It's a suburb out of the Detroit area. I've known from the time my mom says that I was three years old that I wanted to be a police officer and so she said that I'd always walk around the house saying I wanted to be a cop and I wanted to be a police officer and then when I started looking for schools, Ferris was number three in the nation for criminal justice and so I just knew that I wanted to stay in the Michigan area and I came up to Ferris and visited for orientation and I came up for volleyball camps here in high school and I fell in love with it. So I was very excited when I got accepted to Ferris. I was an RA my sophomore year and I was a RA in Kramer Hall, and I loved it. Uh, it was one of the best experiences I've had at Ferris, and it definitely helped me a lot with law enforcement and being more assertive and aggressive and things like that. So being an RA was definitely influential in my life. I really wanted to work for a, a department that was big into community policing and really was more than just being a beat cop or just being a police officer out making traffic stops and arrests. I wanted to do more than that. So with Ferris Police Department, they really encourage us to meet the students, know the students. We teach classes, we'll go to classes for students, we'll put on programs. We do all sorts of different things with the students and try and influence them. As far as helping Big Rapids community, um, I've definitely been as involved as I can be. Um, we do, we have taught self-defense classes to several women in Big Rapids. We've also gone into the schools. My partner, which is Sergeant Wing, he's the other RAD instructor, which is Rape Aggression Defense. We teach a self-defense class. And we've gone in and taught lots of Girl Scouts, and we've also taught a lot of the community members. I'm also a firefighter for the city, and I've been a firefighter for the city of Big Rapids for about six years now, and I love that. When we first start going into the halls, when school first starts at the very beginning of the semester, we'll walk into our assigned hall and the students will look at us and kind of like a deer in headlights and they'll shut their doors and things. And then I'll say, you know, I'm not here to try and see what you're doing. I'm just here to meet you. This is my hall. I'm Officer Paquette. And then they feel a lot more comfortable because they just instantly think that we're all, all the cops are out to get them or something like that. But that's not the case. So we are here to get to know you as a student too. We're not just always here to bust you. And that's one thing that I, I wish that the students would 
would realize, and I think they do once they come into contact with a lot of our police officers. If I could give any advice to students as far as their career goes, I would definitely, definitely say please try your career first as far as go to, if you're in law enforcement, go to a ride along. If you're in communications, go to an agency where you think you might want to work and ask them if you can come and just, you know, see what they do for the day. It would be so unfortunate, I think, to not want to go to your job every day and to be sad to go to your job and, and just have that feeling of, you know, disheartening as far as wanting to work. I love my job and I really hope that all students at Ferris can find a job that they love as much as I do. I feel like when I, when I go home at night or something, I feel like I've just done my hobby, like it's a hobby. I just love it. I couldn't ask for a better 12 years and I just hope that the next, you know, 20 years or something just are as wonderful as the past has been. It's just been a wonderful experience. Well, I got into geology uh, because I like to backpack, be outside, uh, and and so when I got to college and realized I could actually maybe earn a living uh, studying geology, then that was pretty exciting when I discovered that. I've been doing that for 20 years here now at Ferris uh, and still loving it uh, and enjoying being out there with the students. In class, um, we're set into groups and you know, you might not think that at the beginning of the class you're going to be friends with these people, but as time goes on you realize like, hey, this is a really good setup and it's easy to learn, so he just sets it up real perfectly for learning. Well, I do have a little bit different structure than I think probably most classes in terms of how I run the class. It's organized into groups, learning groups, teams. Um, students get homework assignments that they have to do daily and uh, they come to class ready to talk about them. And so they're talking with each other in teams every day, uh, every class day. Uh, my basic philosophy is that the more involved students are in, in, in the classroom uh, and actually um, more active they are uh, uh, at learning the material, then the better they're going to learn it and the longer they'll remember it. So far we've gone on two field trips. The first one was the river back by the Newman Center, um, kind of where tubing down the river is up to there and we learned like the basic concepts of the spheres of the earth, the geosphere and stuff. And that was really cool because that was actually like our first lab and we went outside so that was a really nice surprise for me. It was part of my lab, uh, lab portion of the uh, geology classes. I like to get students outside. Uh, geology is a real visual kind of hands-on out there science, and so uh, we'll make trips down to the out to the gravel pit. Uh, we get down to the river, thinking about um, some of the landscape and uh, processes going on there. A day trip to Sleeping Bear Dunes. Uh, that uh, do that pretty much every semester. It's a great trip. Really beautiful part of the state, and uh, allows some good discussion about the ge uh, geologic history of the state. The Distinguished Teacher Award was a great honor. It's one of those um, things that ranks pretty high because it's something that is uh, awarded by a committee of your peers, other faculty uh, on campus, who have spent time sitting in on your classroom and, uh, and uh, talking to your students and getting evaluations from your students. And, to actually kind of earn the award is a pretty big deal in my eyes. I think it's one of the um, really highest honors you can get as a, as a, as a teacher is to be recognized by the other, other teachers uh, as, as somebody who's good at what they do. Mm -hmm.